again this was July 8th at the Wheatsville Food Co-op here on uh, Lamar Boulevard in South Austin where we were told they would not sell us our food that we need to survive unless we put a face mask on our face which we cannot do because we are medically exempt even under the governor's orders and yet they refuse to accept that and to acknowledge it and uh, refuse to uh, sell us the food we need. So I just want to want to uh, record this. Uh, Absolutely. This is uh, July 8th, 2020 at Wheatsville Co-op on Lamar, I think it is. And I've been told that we cannot purchase our needed food items, that they will not accept payment for them. I've informed them of the legal tender law that says that if they refuse payment that the items are forfeit and uh, do not have to be paid for. They've informed me that they would cite me for, um, what was it? So for theft. For theft. So since they haven't agreed to sell you these items, uh, if you leave with them, we'd cite you for theft. Because, because the items are mine at that point under the legal tender law. So if you cite me for They're theft, not. you're citing me for stealing what belongs to me. The rules to answer this premise is you have to be wearing a mask and you're choosing not to. No, no, I'm not choosing to. I cannot do so. And I'm exempted under the governor's order. And they are not recognizing that. So they're violating my rights under that law. And, you know, under the Constitution as well. You can contact so, your higher ups to this. Um, yeah, but this again, that doesn't feed us. And we need we need food for the right. next couple of days. Because oh, like oh. I said, we're homeless. We're living out of an RV that's, you know, broken down. And okay. So, you know, we, we have no other means. All right. Well, it's up to you if you're going to, if you can leave without the mission you would trespass or if we have to do that, that's up to you. All right. Will you leave without being issued a trespass? Well. If they do issue a trespass and you will not be able to return to this establishment for a year. <laughs> Isn't there such a thing as a warning first? It's not that we would take you to jail now. Now, yeah. if they tell you, hey, leave and don't come back and you refuse to leave, mm -hmm. then, you go then, to jail. then you'd go to jail. But as long as you leave, um, they don't even want to do the criminal trespass notice. They just want you to leave. Yeah. Okay, we're being denied our food. This is evidence of it right here. This is the needed food that we need for the next couple of days to survive. We're being told you cannot buy food. You have to have a uh, buffoon on your face, basically a Petri dish, you know, strapped to your face. That's what those are, you know, those masks. They, they gather a lot of bad bacteria and stuff. And I hate to see what it's going to do to you, but I know what it's already done to me. Because I tried it, and it doesn't work for me. I can't breathe with those things. And nobody... And nobody can tell me I have to uh, suffocate myself. And another thing is, this man here, he's 28 years old. He's been handicapped all his life. We can't afford him hearing aids. He can't hear. He relies on line of sight to lip read. We're not going to add to his handicap by trying to put something over our face so that he can't see it and be able to communicate. And he can't, to this point, I don't think he knows what you've said at all. Have you been able to hear them? No. Very much. I can't understand them. Very That's much. the point, you see. The lip read, he can understand you, but when you've got your face covered, he can't understand. That's yeah, and it's just my policy, so so I don't get fired. That that's handicapping him even further, and I'm worried about him because you know what if an officer comes up behind him or even in front of him with one of these things on and barks an order at him, and he can't hear them and understand them. You know that worries me because I know how that can go down. Yeah. You are always more than welcome to contact the governor. Um, how? How? <laughs> He's holed up in his match. How do you contact the yeah. governor? Well, uh, and and so uh, we're just following the the rules that we have set in place. So we can keep. I mean, we were down there one Saturday at the governor's mansion, and oh, nice. it was nowhere to be seen. Yeah, I, and I have no clue where he is. Honestly, I don't. I don't keep track of him. Well, I know one thing. Uh, the uh, County uh, GOPs, uh, yeah. starting with one county up near uh, the New Mexico border, they're uh, censuring them. Hmm. And there are going to be a lot of counties, I think, and GOPs yeah. are going to be doing that leading up to the convention. So, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. he's liable to get himself thrown out of office over Maybe. this because he's done a lot of things wrong. Three yeah. or four different violations of the law.
like shutting down all these businesses, you know, and, and uh, turning people away. I mean, look at it. Our homeless situation, we have no place to bathe. We used to go, we paid for a membership at the Y, so we have a place to bathe. We can't do that now. Even They said even when they open up, they're not going to let you shower. So we have no place to bathe. And then the governor says in his edict that it's for pub, you know personal hygiene, if that's important. If you can't come in and go to a restroom to even wash your hands, where do you get personal hygiene out of that? You know, you'd, ha- you'd have to take that up with the YMCA. No, I mean, I mean, all the businesses like this one, if we wanted to use the restroom, they would deny us because, oh, you're not wearing a face mask. Take it up with them. <laughs> you see, but there's there's the thing. You can't use the toilet. You can't wash your hands. You can't be personally. Do they prefer it if people take a dump out here on their sidewalk? Is that what is, this is leading to? They, they have provided some porta potties. Uh, they're under. Ben White and Manchek. Oh, we don't go anywhere near that. That, okay. that is dangerous. And, and that, that's absolutely your choice. At our age, I they, mean, they do, they do have to I'm 69. Care. My wife yeah. is 65. Right. Uh, you know, and and we have the responsibility of trying to care for him, and he doesn't have a social security number, so he can't even right. get anything. He can't get any assistance huh. of any kind because he doesn't have a state issued birth certificate. We went to uh, social security, tried to get him a social right. security number. No, sorry. His older sisters got them just fine under the same circumstances. Interesting. But they refuse him the right to have a Social Security number. So he can't vote. He can't have a bank account. He can't work. He can't do anything. How's he going to survive? You'd have to take that up with the Social Security. You know, I tried that, and it doesn't work with them. And then I called the the U.S. uh, Justice Department. Oh, we don't handle that. We're not going to do anything, you know, with that so i, I said well who do we contact I, who do I we do not have that power and honestly honestly don't know i told him i said who do i contact and he hung up on me yeah me i mean i guess the first part would be trying to get him a birth certificate wherever that's out of state out. state of missouri we can't afford to go there we yeah. you know it's beyond our economic means and so we're stuck and out of our limited ssi we have to you know try and see that his needs are met and now right. we can't even do that because we're going to be refused the right to even buy our food, you know. So this country has gone to hell already. It is, you know, I don't know if you know it, but we're in a war with China right now, economically and otherwise. Because, you know, what they're doing is they're trying to instigate this country into a civil war because they want to destroy it from within without having to come in, march troops in, do it themselves. Although they've got, from what I hear, China Chinese in uh, these... Uh, sun farms, you know, these solar farms, and they're waiting okay. like, like an army ready to, you know, march out and, and attack. And, and, I have uh, not d- heard of that. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I do a lot of research on these yeah. types of things. Research is always uh, I'm telling you, it's, it's a dangerous situation right now in this world, and, and something needs to be done about it. Because yeah, I, what, I only have, I only have I know, limited tech change on a very small level. I just, I just not, try not, to not that much power, apparently. <laughs> Not that much you know, power, apparently, because no, letting people like us starve is it's, not an it's option. Really not really. that much power, unfortunately. Serve, protect, and defend. You know, yeah. I think isn't that the oath you take? I mean, you know. Yeah. So uh, I would expect you to live up to that, and any any of you officers, yeah. you know, Absolutely. we don't want to cause any type of trouble for anybody. My my gra- uh, great uncle was a three-term sheriff who was killed in the line of duty. My oh, great grandfather yeah. was a county judge. And, and by the way, my great uncle's son was a three-term sheriff as well. So, uh, and, and I was at one point, uh, I worked for Pinkerton's uh, detective agency. Oh, okay. So out of, out of Denver. But, uh, so I know about law enforcement and I've been involved in it for Good. quite some time. But, you know, this is beyond the pale. What's going on right now? This is un-American. This is not yeah, under I don't, I don't the... I have the power to change any of that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, we all do have the power, actually. We just got to stand up to it and say, no, you can't do that anymore. There's only so much I can do until I lose my job. And yeah. Well, that's why I think a lot of police are quitting now because of what's going on when they're not being supported by their governor or by their mayor of the cities and so on. And they're being put out there on the line and their lives are forfeit because of that, because of all the violence and stuff taking place. Armed insurrectionists basically roaming the streets and looking for violence and trouble and shooting innocent children. I mean, have you heard of the little black children that have been killed across this nation on July 4th alone? You know, it's pathetic. It's pathetic. I mean, you know, 
people getting in gunfights and killing little children, you know. Yeah, I got so. well, we all try and work within our bounds and do as much as we can. Well, I worry for the future of this country because it's not long. Everyone does. It's not long for this world if, if it keeps going in this direction. Yeah. Just like just like our lives aren't long for this world if we can't eat. And those people should be ashamed of themselves. And I, Absolutely. I would, like I said, I would contact your lawyer. Get them started on that. See what you can do on that end. Yeah. That's if this is a store that you like to shop. That's that's if we can find one pro bono. Yeah. Um, because I don't see this going away anytime soon. I don't feel like. I mean, we don't. I don't want to be wearing this any more than anybody else wants to. <laughs> No. Um, but at, I'll be following my policy. You really shouldn't. Yeah. If you get headaches, that's probably why, because of oxygen deprivation. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not yeah. disagreeing with you, but I, am, I do know that I want to keep my job, so I walk around and wear yeah. And if you exert yourself in particular wearing those, you're in danger. You know, the, people have been running and jogging with face coverings like oh. that and have dropped dead from collapsed lungs. Yeah. You know? That's but, not good. I know it isn't. That's not good. <laughs> so uh, take heed with that and... Uh, See if you can work work from the inside to change that because that's absolutely necessary. You know. Well, thank you. Sure thing. You thank you. I guess we don't get any bread anymore. Or milk. We're here in Austin, Texas, and as you can read from our sign, that there is uh, homeless, elderly, and handicapped abuse and torture taking place at various retail establishments where we have been denied the right to buy food, denied the right to enter stores with air conditioning, though we're homeless. We've been on the streets for five years, two years in this broken down RV that's 32 years old. But uh, because of this mask mandate, then we've been denied shopping for food and water. We've been denied toilet and hygiene. We've been denied AC shelter from the extreme heat as it is today, well over 100 degrees out here. We've been denied our equal rights. We need to end this maskedness abuse, and we need to do it now, especially of the handicapped or of the medically exempt, which we are. All three of us have different reasons to be medically exempt from it. Uh, our son here, of course, is uh, deaf and has no hearing aids. He relies on line of sight uh, to be able to uh, lip read. And if you wear a mask, it's impossible for him to do that. But what his sign says, we can't breathe, not only with the mask, but we're being denied showers at a Y where we paid for a membership. We can't bathe either. And as my wife's sign says, lockdown equals tyranny. And the blood dripping from the tyranny shows you where this is all headed if something isn't done about it. If we can't buy our necessary food in order to survive each day or our water, we've got maybe four days, less than a week, up to, uh, I've gone quite a long time fasting in the past several times, over 30 days a couple of times, and uh, 20 some days another time, but you know, it would not uh, be long before we would be dead due to this lockdown, which they want to keep this this mask not nonsense, this insanity going until the end of December. And it's only July. So if they keep this going, it's going to be the destruction of a lot of innocent people, and we're gonna be first among them if they keep this if they keep going with this. Every time my wife tries to enter Walmart here, she gets stopped at the door and they tell her Oh, you can't go in here without a mask. And they, she tries to tell them that she's medically exempt, and they said, uh, and shows them a card to that effect, and they say, well, that's a scam. That's uh, what, what's their exact word? That's fake. That's fake, they say, as though our health conditions are fake conditions. And we've let them know what that we have these uh, health issues, and they say on their sign going in the door that uh, except for people with medical conditions or medical issues, health issues. And uh, sometimes I tell them that, I have no problems. Other times, uh, they, uh, particular individuals, and I don't think it's everybody, I think it's just certain ones who get a power trip and get a little tyranny in their heads, want to become despots, and uh, they're gonna order you about, tell you you can't shop there, tell you you have to leave the store, call the police,
police on you as they did at uh, the uh, store in this video that's about uh, that you've just seen and uh, you know this is uh, and denied us the right to do our shopping and to buy our food so uh, we need to do something about this the governor of the state of Texas needs to do something about this because you're hurting innocent people and you need to put a stop to it now